first and foremost, seeing you walk in with a walker was so incredibly powerful. And I know that from October of last year to now, it's really been challenging. You've had to work really hard to get to that point. Yeah. Tell me what that's been like. Well, you know, I'm, I'm truly blessed because I have such a good support system. My family and my blue family and then from the, the prayers and, you know, the support that we get from, you know, everywhere else, different parts of the area and also the city. Um, the, we got letters from outside the country even. So it's been amazing, you know, that you know, all the letters pretty much said, you know, that, you know, I inspire them. But every time I read one of the letters, it truly inspired me, you know. Inspired you to keep going. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. You know, in talking about your injuries, Tell me how those injuries impacted your healing and your rehabilitation and getting you to this point. Well, physically, I mean, I, I can't ask for anything else. You know, I mean, the doctors, the, the main neurosurgeon or the neuro doctor told at the first meeting um, with my family there um, that I would never move the left side of my body, you know, so... I, I remember I looked at him sitting in the chair and I was like, I accept the challenge, you know, because he was, he was that kind of doctor that, you know, was always smiling, but he was realistic. And, you know, I, I guess he didn't know how many times I've heard, you can't do this and you can't do that, you know, and I would just, my father always told me, you got to get tunnel vision and... You know, it's you gotta f focus on the goal and uh, don't let nobody stop you. I mean, that's some serious determination. I got a three-year-old, and he's he's the light in your life, along with your beautiful wife. Yeah. You know, having heard you say that, what really touched me was video that I saw of you shot on St. Patrick's Day dancing with your beautiful wife. That well, was so powerful. Tell me what that moment was like for you. And you can take your time. Uh -huh. What was that moment like, Carlos? It was it was pretty physically painful. I mean, she was carrying me pretty much, but I told her that, you know, for my birthday, I wanted to dance, you know, so. And you love dancing. Oh, yeah. But to be in her arms and to move on the dance floor. Oh, my God, it was beautiful. Yeah. And what was really sweet was seeing the reactions from other people, the big smiles of everyone looking on. Well, I wasn't looking at anybody else. I was just focusing the moment. Mm. On your wife. Tell me what she has meant to you in terms of your recovery and healing. I mean, where do I start? You know, uh, I was fortunate enough that, uh, you know, I never had to go to bed alone in the hospital. Every night she was there. She never left your side. No. And then we have, uh, like I said, we have a three-year-old and, uh, you know, my whole family pitched in, my sister, my brother-in-law, you know, my sister's a doctor, so she was really involved. 
and uh my you know while I was in the hospital and uh you know she her and her husband really took time out of their their lives you know and they have three daughters four daughters and uh you know it's it's hard on all of us you know it's you know But they've all joined forces to make sure that you pull through and that yeah. you're walking. Yeah, I mean, uh, I really didn't know how much of an impact it was right away. But like when I asked the doctors, you know, what what can what do I foresee in the future for me? And you know, when they said that, you know, there's we we have no data on individuals that suffered the amount because the fragments are still all in my head and I have one right here so I was shot four times in the head and then one time in the shoulder and uh, it was you know all the bullets are still in me and uh, you know they said that the fragments they have known they do have data that they do move but they don't, you know, they're so close to some main arteries that they didn't want to remove them. And, uh, you know, that, you know, anything could happen in the future. So every day is a gift. You have such a positive attitude about all of this. You really do. It's, it's difficult. You know, I had my moments. And, uh. You know, which I tell myself, you know, that so many people count, counting on me that I, I gotta, I gotta keep pushing. But to everybody else out there, you know, going through their struggles, you know, it's okay to get help. You know, it's so important. You know, I'm, I'm getting help from all ends, my family the community and my blue family and uh, you know even therapy you know my psychologist and uh, you know it's been very helpful you know and I was one of the officers that you know I guess I didn't you know look I didn't look down upon talking to somebody else that didn't understand what officers went through but I always had my father, you know, and he retired CPD and, you know, whenever I, I couldn't talk to my wife about something that was bad, I had, you know. You have your dad. You know, when you talk about the strength in doing therapy and, and going to speak with someone about everything, yeah. it must have taken... I said, I remember seeing the footage of you and saying, my gosh, he's actually gone to court. I can't imagine the strength it took to go to court and see those people that were responsible for this. I, I wanted to be there. It was really important, you know, for me to be there to represent Allah and I, you know, because, I mean, they, they took away not only an individual, it was what she stood for. You know, she stood for, she really wanted to do good for the community. And she really loved being a police officer. And, you know, not only was she beautiful on the outside, she was beautiful on the inside. She truly was. And, uh, I mean, her strength was beyond measurable. I mean, it was, it was just like her mother, Elizabeth, you know, and Elizabeth, you know, you know, that I got another mom, you know, so, yeah. And it's really beautiful. You know, when you're speaking about Ella, I know that you do not remember much about that night. Is there anything that you do want to share with us that you do recall? Um, before the incident, actually, I, I do recall a little bit of, uh, right before the incident, it was an arrest that we assisted and Josh, Ella, and I um, assisted other officers in a foot chase, and we apprehended an offender with a gun. 
So, you know, she was driving and Josh was in the front seat and uh, I was in the rear passenger side. And uh, I know that's a good memory that I have with her, you know, that she got, you know, even the gun that was used against us, you know, we, it was going to be used in, a, you know, a possible shooting and, you know, some random child maybe. So we, we got two guns off the street, you know, that night that this happened. So I'm going to take that with me. What would be your advice to someone going through a similar circumstance? Because you have shown such tremendous grace, such incredible strength in what you've gone through. And I mean, we're not even an entire year. The shooting happened in August. And you're using a walker and walking through here, quite honestly, with ease. It was, the steps are a little more difficult. I almost had a, you know, I almost fell back. I had to grab the, the wall, but you know, it's, it's amazing that I'm able to do what I physically can do, but I do get really tired, but it's like to everyone going through, I mean, and it's a shame because there's an officer, uh, Tyler Bailey, that, you know, we've been in contact with and his wife, you know, who's going through very similar things. He was wounded in the head. So it's like, you know, it's dangerous out there right now for officers, for everyone. It's it's so bad, but everyone handles it differently and everyone has different support levels. And just, you know, if you need help, just get it from wherever avenue you go to and you need to. And if you have to, you know, I'm here, you know, so if any officers going through anything, you know, you know, I want to be here for them, you know, so. That's interesting you say that because my next question for you was, what's next for Carlos Yanez Jr.? You accepted the challenge. You've relearned how to walk. I think, not to put words in your mouth, you're going to even go stronger and stronger and probably soon start walking without the walker. That's probably one of your next goals. But what do you see for yourself in the future? I mean, just healing as much as I can and trying to be there for my son and my family, you know, because my family really has sacrificed a lot. And, you know, I really got to focus on me now and that's all they want, you know. And right now I... I do want to help people and people tell me all the time that, you know, you're a miracle and God kept you here for a reason. So I'm just waiting for him to let me know what reason that is. You, you know, know, when you say that, it made me think of like when the conversation that we just wrapped up before where you were saying, talking about Tyler and how like in a sense, it's like you can be a beacon of hope for those going through this and anyone struggling, especially with whether it's, you know, wanting to get mental health help, struggling through a situation like yours. Is that something that you see yourself doing down the road? I mean, not professionally, but they, like you have to go through, I mean, years of, you know, education, but just someone to simply talk to, you know, I would love that, you know, because I think it would be beneficial for me too, you know, because I'm working on a lot of stuff too, internally and emotionally and mentally, you know, but, you know, it's, it's difficult, you know, for grown men to open up, you know, so I kind of feel like it would be easier to open up with someone that has been through or you know, has similar some similar issues or incidences. You're going to be among the first on the Brotherhood for the Fallen podcast. And I wanted to ask you, for you, how does this feel that, you know, 
around June 6th when they start introducing the very first of the series that you're going to be among the first and that people will hear your story. What does that mean to you? It means a lot to me, you know, because the organization, Rick, really, I mean, does so much for officers. I mean, there's a lot of organizations that do a lot behind the scenes, you know, that, you know, we wear the shirts and we support the Blue family, but it's, it goes, the organizations really go above and beyond behind the scenes. And a lot of people don't know what they do and what they sacrifice. I mean, Rick has been there for my family while I was in the hospital, you know, and uh, it's, it's a great thing to be able to do this because maybe it'll, even if it helps one person, you know, I, I hope, you know, it would be all the world. You know, you spoke of your son so many times. Tell me, how old is he right now? And please tell me his name. I want to make sure I have that right. Uh, his, his name is uh, CJ Carlos Giovanni Yanez III. <laughs> and uh, he's uh, three and a half. He'll be uh, four September. Uh, What's one thing that really touches your heart that he has said to you or done with you since this? When uh, it's come to your recovery? He's done so many things, but uh, last night we were laying down in bed and he looks up at me and he's like, I like your eye, you know? And I was just like, I, I it took me a second cause I, I didn't have my hearing aid in and uh, with the tinnitus and uh, it's like a ringing in my head or in my ear, like a fire alarm going off. But I, I didn't hear what he said and then my wife was like, she was giggling and she was like, oh my God, you know, and she's like, that's so cute. He, do you like his eye? And so, yeah, that's what he said. He liked my eye, you know, so. So you thought your prosthetic eye was pretty? Yeah. Oh. And my wife picked this one out, uh, the green pretty. one, which, <laughs> yeah, the ocularist that I have is just amazing. You know, there's mm -hmm. so many people that really do support the police mm -hmm. and they support the blue line, you know, but it's like. You need them to talk, speak up, you know, and it's a shame that, you know, if you support the police, people think that you're bad or you're racist in some type of way, but it's like, we need the police, you know, they're, they're, they're human beings too. They have wives, daughters, Ella is a daughter. I mean, I'm a son and a father, a brother, an uncle, and you know, it, 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 you know, we bleed and we hurt, you know, so. Is there anything else that you want to add? I want to thank everybody. If I could name everyone, I would. Even the students from schools that wrote letters and little jokes while I was in the hospital, they meant all the world to me. But I want to thank them and love them. I love them. They helped in your recovery? More than they, they know. And you said letters from around the world. Like what country? Can you remember any of the countries? I don't remember. Maybe my dad knows. Uh, um, but yeah, we, we got a lot of letters from Europe. Um, which was the furthest ones, but they were around the state, around the country, you know, so it's even, I mean, like I said, Europe, it, it's pretty amazing, you know, and it's just amazing how much love, and I really do think that, you know, someone up there, higher power, heard everyone's prayers that night, and he was like, this guy's, you know, I can't explain it. But you are here. 